Good morning. So in the church, the life of the church, we are in between Ascension Day and Pentecost. 10 or 11 days, depending on how you count. Over the last few years, we have been invited to join in with that ancient prayer of the church, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I believe we have been in a season of preparation. We have been preparing for next Sunday when we celebrate Pentecost. When we have our gift day as an opportunity to give thanks to God for all that he has been doing for us. It's an opportunity to give thanks to our generous God who gives to us in so many generous ways that we often miss. We have been spending a few weeks looking at giving and serving in the church and how we need to prepare ourselves and our hearts so that we are in the right place to do so. Thy Kingdom Come is now a worldwide movement. We have seen many, many, many people come to faith. I believe that something wonderful is starting to stir in our nation. I believe that the Holy Spirit is starting to waken people up in our nation. Those of you at Men's Breakfast yesterday will have heard this little bit, but I'm going to share it for the benefit of everyone. This was from Pete Gregg. He says, something wonderful seems to be stirring. Probably where I nicked that phrase from. Snapshot one, a week last Friday in Hackney, East London. Hundreds of young people from three local churches stayed up all night to pray and seek God. Al Gordon wrote, I've never seen anything like it. There's a remarkable sense of consecrating love, setting apart the young and calling them to holiness. Snapshot two, a week ago yesterday, in Trafalgar Square, thousands gathered to hear the gospel. Many were healed and saved. And the evangelist Daniel Chan summed it up in one word, historic. Snapshot three, last Sunday, St. Aldate's Oxford, where George Whitfield gave his life to Christ, is overflowing. So many young people gave their lives to Christ, they lost count. Stephen Foster says, and I trained with Stephen, it broke the systems. From the start of the service, it felt literally like anything could happen and probably would. It was mostly Gen Z responding, but also prison leavers and people in recovery. Jesus tells us to be alert of the signs of the times, but to have hope, not hype. I'm not sharing that to hype us all up. When in our darkest moments, and it feels like everything is a failure, something is stirring in our nation. Over Easter, many churches reported bumper attendances. 12,000 people were baptized in France, which is one of the most secular nations on earth. 419 were baptized at New Life Church in Colorado Springs. 469 gave their lives to Christ at Audacious Church in Manchester. And 116 got saved at Soul Church in Norwich. God is on the move. God is on the move. Meanwhile, beyond all of the things that churches are putting on, there is a shift in society. Public intellectuals arguing for faith in God. Influence on social media professing faith. Columns in the Wall Street Journal and London Times reporting a return to religion among the young. The Spectator even using the overexcited headline revival. More than 7,000 school classrooms have now been turned into prayer rooms thanks to prayer spaces in schools. 25% of Australians say they'd accept an invitation to church. And 70% say that they talk to God that they're no longer supposed to believe in. I don't know what the stats are for England, but wouldn't it be great to read what the stats were for England? If all of that, your response is, well, it doesn't feel like that here, that's okay. Firstly, we need to pray. It doesn't matter how small that spark is, but we need to pray. And if there is a spark and we pray, we essentially pour petrol on it and we can start a fire. There are 20 children in our young people's work this morning. There are two teenage helpers. That is growth. It is happening here. I look out and see all of your lovely faces this morning. There is growth here. This church is starting to grow. 
This church is starting to come alive with the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that is why we spent that weekend at Letton Hall looking at our identity. How do we live spirit-filled lives in the power of the Holy Spirit to make a difference out there? I believe that is why now is the time for us to reach out to our, nation, uh, our community. Now, now is the time to do st missional stuff out there with the money that will be collected next week from gift day. Something is stirring. Are we going to get alongside what God is doing and join in with that awakening? Dare we say, dare we even utter that word, revival. We've been praying for it for so long. And it feels like we are on the cusp of something great. But, but, our, are our hearts ready? Are we ready for what is to come? It was a short reading this morning, but there is a lot that we can take from those few words in Mark's Gospel. It's about giving. The rich, they show in how much they love God by how much they are giving. The priests noticed that because they were watched in the temple. They were watched how much they put in the pots. And then the widow comes in and puts in two small coins. If we look back to the ancient Middle East, it's likely that was an entire meal. Probably not a full day's wage, but at least a meal. She wouldn't know where her meal was coming from. She would sacrifice that for God. And what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? The rich give out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty. She put in everything. So let me ask you a question this morning, friends. Are you willing to go all in for God? When it comes to our gift day next week, are you going to give generously because you're wealthy and it's actually just going to mean perhaps you don't go out for a meal, but you have something in? Or are you going to give sacrificially so that it makes an impact on where you are, on how you live? How you answer that question, and I'm not going to ask people, how you answer that question will start to show where your heart is with God. Is he an afterthought? You think, well, actually, yeah, I've got a bit of extra money this month. I'll, uh, I'll put that bit in the gift day because I won't miss it. Or are you going to be generous? Are you going to say, I need this money for something, but I am going to give this to you, God. It's sacrificially because you are a generous God. And you provide for us. If we're generous, if we are fully committed and surrendered to God and we give sacrificially, I believe that in a few months' time, people might be writing that stuff about Christchurch Bushmead. In a few months' time, we may be stood here. Well, I may be stood here, you're sitting and saying, hundreds of people have come to know the Lord. Hundreds of people have deepened their faith. We have continued in our discipleship. We have come to know more of Jesus, more than we've ever known before. Because we'll never know everything. We have come to depend truly on the Holy Spirit in all that we do. Because we are giving all of ourselves to God. In some ways, those few verses are about giving. But they're about so much more. Because they're about where is our heart? Are we fully committed to God? Do you come to church on a Sunday? Enjoy the service. Then go to work on Monday. And faith just goes out the window. I was guilty of that. I worked in law for four years, and it was only within the last six months that I shared I was a Christian. 
I tried to get along with what was going on in the legal profession. Apologies to any of you in the legal profession. But when they were just after more and more and more money. Because I thought that was how I would fit in to that, that particular profession. But God had other ideas. That's when things started to go wrong. Because I stood up to my boss and said, I'm not going to do that because it is not ethical. It goes against my Christian belief. And the slippery slope started because God had other plans for me. And I said before, I have told you before, my DDO said to me, if you hadn't have left law, you'd have never got further in the discernment process. So when we come to gift day, which is about so much more than just giving our money, than writing a check, than sending a bank transfer, the first question should not be, how much am I going to give? The first question, well, the first thing you should do is, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are a generous God. Thank you that you love me more than I will ever know. Then the, then the question should be, okay, Lord, what do you want me to give? And gift day next week is not just about the money. It is about our time. It is about how we serve the church in so many different ways. There are so many of you sat out here that do so much stuff in the background that we don't see. It's not all about the upfront stuff on a Sunday. It's not all about the upfront stuff on a Wednesday. It's about those little jobs that perhaps we do at home that nobody sees. Perhaps it's writing the minutes for the PCC. Perhaps it's cleaning the toilets on a Friday. Perhaps it's fixing a light bulb. Perhaps it's preparing to lead worship. Perhaps it's preparing a sermon. Perhaps it's getting the milk ready so that there's milk when we have our tea and coffee. Perhaps it's coming those 10 minutes earlier to put the coffee urn on so that it's ready for people when we get to church. Nothing, nothing that we do for this church should be devalued. All of those things that I've just said are probably far more important than me standing up here and speaking to you. Because without all the other stuff, this couldn't happen. Without the support of all of you people, this would not happen. Because I could not on my own lead a service, preach, do the tech, do the worship, do the coffee, tea and coffee, do the cleaning, do the kids' work. The list goes on and on and on. Do the welcoming. Do the clearing up. Do the collection. There is so much that happens. So where are our hearts with God? When we hear things like that that Pete Gregg shared, are we thinking, that's great for them, but it's not going to happen here? Or are we thinking, hallelujah, praise the Lord, bring it on. More of you, Lord, in Christchurch. More of you, Lord, in Luton. More of you, Lord, so that we can go and make a difference. Because it's not ourselves that make a difference. It's God working in us and through us, and us surrendering ourselves totally to him that makes the difference. So the widow who puts the two coins in the pot that the priests ridicule, she is the one that is totally surrendered to God. She doesn't make a big thing of it. I'm not asking everyone to make a big thing. I'm just asking you to spend time with God over this next week. To say, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so faithful a king? And we will sing those words at the end of the service. So do we trust that God will provide for us? Do we trust that he will do what he says he will do? Do we trust God that if we start surrendering ourselves fully, we will start to see things happen in this church? We will start to see growth. Well, we're already seeing growth. But when we reach out in mission to our community, when we come up with all these different ideas that we're going to have at that meeting next, next Sunday after the service, when we start looking at all that God is saying to us, 
and we start reaching out and actually being deliberate about reaching our community, I think we're going to grow even more than we have. Because Jesus is calling his community back to him. It's not about what we are doing in here. It is about what he is doing out there. And when the Holy Spirit is doing stuff out there, naturally that will overflow into the church. Because we've got it wrong so many times. We think about the church as the four walls and what we do for an hour or an hour and a half on a Sunday. But the church is about the people. The church is about action. The church is about getting alongside with what God is doing. The church is about surrendering ourselves so that there is less of us and more of him. And when we get that bit right, we will be ready to go out to reach the lost through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. So are you like the rich, wanting to give because you are generous and you have a lot of wealth? Or are you like the widow that's going to give much of what she has because you are so devoted to God? You are surrendered to him who is going to do all things. When we gather next week to look at mission, I've said it before. Let's dream big, because God can do far more than we can ever ask or imagine, as Paul tells us. So we will bring our ideas together, and if you're not going to be here, email me. Email me ideas. There is nothing off limits. The PCC will then review it all, and we'll look at which two or three we really feel God is asking us to engage with. Because the PCC, as I said two or three weeks ago, discerners, not decision makers. We will discern what God is saying to this church. But we can't necessarily do that on our own. It is not just about the 14 of us, I think it is, on the PCC. It is about everybody who is sat here now and our friends who are not with us today. Listening and hearing what is God saying to the church in 2024? What is God saying to me? What can I do? As I said a few weeks ago, when we looked at Abraham and Isaac. Even if it sounds totally outrageous... Don't be afraid to send it in. Because if it is totally outrageous, it's probably from God. If it's something that is so outside of your comfort zone, it's probably from God. I shared with a few people this last week. When I was at school, I could not stand up and public speak. It was, St- it was you, wasn't it, yesterday, Steve, I think. I could not stand up and do it. I would burst out laughing straight away because the nerves got the better of me. So if you'd have said to me a few years, well, probably quite a few years ago now, If you'd have said to me, you're going to stand up and preach most Sundays, I'd have said, no, I'm not. I can't public speak. I laugh. Those of you that were with us in the pandemic will have seen what happens when I laugh. (laughs) Those things that Pete Gregg talked about. Firstly, we pray. Firstly, we pray. Secondly, We need to be confident in sharing our faith. There is a growing spiritual hunger in this land. People are open to the Lord despite what the media says, despite what the secular society tells us. People are open to hearing about God. When things like this happen, they start in certain hotspots before they spread out. It is coming to Luton. The Holy Spirit is coming. He wants to make a difference in Luton. I believe that is what that bell was about, that word that Wendy shared this morning. The church bell. Dong! Now is the time because something is stirring in the atmosphere. Something is stirring in this nation. And thirdly, let's invest in our young people. Because this turn-in is most marked amongst Generation Z. Let's not miss this, church. Let's not miss this opportunity to talk to our young people about who Jesus Christ is. Because there are missing generations in the church. How do we rectify that? We start talking to our young people so that they start coming to church once again. 
You may be thinking, Tim, this is all pie in the sky. You've been saying for so long, society is so secular, faith is being pushed out of the way. Yes, that is all still true. The church just needs to wake up. All is not lost. We're in a season of preparation, ascension to Pentecost. We pray, thy kingdom come. It's a worldwide movement of prayer. We pray thy kingdom come so that when next week comes, we celebrate the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate that we are equipped for the task that God is calling us to. And we give generously and sacrificially out of our hearts because it's all about our heart. Where is your heart with God? Are you fully surrendered to him? Or are you thinking, well, yeah, I'm... Okay, well, I'll go to church today. The time has come, friends, to make that decision. The time has come to say, Lord, I am fully surrendered to you. Lord, I am going to do what you ask me to do. And Lord, I want to see revival in this land. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds for all that is to come. We're going to listen to a song called Beautiful Surrender. And during that, I just want you to encourage you to look at the words, perhaps let them be sung over you. And as we listen to those words, ponder that question in your heart. Where am I with God today? Do I need to be fully surrendered? <laughs>